Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Let's go. I got another question for the black people in Chicago. I got an honest, sincere question. How do we stop, and it's, it's a hard question, how do we stop black men from saying the statement, you a big homie if you make it to 30? You ever heard that before? You ever heard that? Where black men say, if you make it to 30 years old, you came up. You know what that means? That means most of them, a lot of us, die before 30. My question is, how do we fix that? The murderous where we will kill, black men are not killing Arabs. They're not killing Chinese. They're not killing the white men that oppressed them. They're killing other brothers. You know how we, we stop, fix that? It gotta start with the laws of God in your mind. We gotta stop smoking cigarettes, stop doing drugs. We gotta stop selling crack. We gotta stop all that. Proverbs 2813. I'm getting back to you. See, one thing about one thing I can't stand about fake Christians, man, is a Christian, you fake damn Christians. I'm gonna tell you about them. The hypocrites. They'll point out a problem and don't give you a solution. I pointed out a problem. Now I'm gonna give you a solution step by step. If you choose not to do that, that's between you and the Lord. I done gave you warning with love and sincerity, Ray. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 13. 28 verse 13. We're talking about repentance. Listen good. Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 13. And, and Christian pastors are soft as hell. We live the life where we struggle. Real struggles, that's why I can identify with you. I know you're going through it. Well, thank the Lord you're not no fake Christian. But I, like, I can deal with you. You're sovereign. Okay, all right. Like, like, who you married to? Jesus? If you're about to say that, I'm about to throw this mic at you, sister. Read. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. I like you because we can dial out and I got solutions. The issue, hold that problem. Give me uh, Isaiah 30. This is the problem with black people. You heard, are you listening to me? Do you identify as black? Even though, yeah, I'm talking to you. Even though you may identify as black, you know you're not, right? You no, you're not. That's hold up, no, no. That speaker's black. You happen to be a medium shade of brown. You are not black. Your forefathers ruled Europe during the Dark Ages. There were castles full of black people in Europe. I bet you didn't know that. Wait. The Book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse one. See, now we bringing a solution out to stop smoking, and the Israelite woman want to walk away. I, that's some that's some messed up stuff right there, Ray. Woo to the rebellious children, because that's what most of you are. You rebellious as hell. You and hold up, you're not rebel. Hold up, you're not rebellious against me. You rebellious against the one true God, because you're not even gonna stay around. I'm giving you a, a way to stop smoking, and you hold up. You won't even receive that. Now you are oh, really. So okay, so they never pick up another cigarette again. Start now, then. You got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right, Ray. Woo! To the rebellious children! And that's how I know you're an Israelite. You're not black, you're not African American, you're the real rebellious Jew that the scriptures speak about. That's how I know who you are. I can stand here boldly and say you are the rebellious Jew. Read. Woo! To the rebellious children, say of the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. Sister smoke cigarette, I'm giving her a solution to stop smoking, but she walk away. That's that's how we know you're an Israelite. Read. And they cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. So I'm sovereign. You ain't sovereign from it. You still gotta pay taxes. You still gotta do everything. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You you have to, yes, you do. They're gonna get you a tax death. And death, they're gonna get your taxes. They're gonna get the taxes from you, sister. You ain't sovereign. Read. That they may add sin to sin. So you add sin to sin. Not only do you smoke cigarettes, then you're still going to dress like a man. And I'm trying to give you the solution. Proverbs 28. 
verse 3. And remember, we warned you, sister. We warned you. A woman that wears pants, you wrong. You smoke, you wrong. You got to change. Come out of that. Read. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. My brother. Man of age, my brother. What, what is your name, if I may ask? He might have hearing aids in there. Read it again. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. My brother, how you doing? I'm going to slow it down because you sit, you listen, you listen. I, the Christian church uses the Bible, but they don't explain what it means. I'm going to read this scripture and ask you what it means. If you don't honestly understand it, I'm going to explain it. And if you have a question about the Bible, I will go into the Bible and use the Bible and make you understand. You understand that? Like, for example, I'm going to ask an open-ended question. And you are probably in your mid to late 60s or maybe older. 79. 79 years old. So, your grandfather could have been a sharecropper and your great-grandfather could have been a slave. He was a slave. So I'm looking at a man, four generations was slavery. You understand that? My question to you is this. Why? Why? Did God allow your great-grandfather to be a slave? Why? You don't know. Now, see, I can deal with that. That's honesty. And with honesty, we can build. Hey, brother man, white socks hat. This man is 79 years old. His great-grandfather was a slave. It was a literal slave. You understand that? I asked him, and this is, he all not to be me and your grandfather. I said, brother, honestly, I said, why did God allow your great-grandfather to become a slave? You know what he said, honestly? I don't know. So I'm going to show you and you why you're, because you are a son of a slave too. You can deny it if you want, but you're the son of slaves. Not, I'm not saying you deny it. Usually black people in Chicago will, will admit it. Some black people, um, they deny it. My question is, why did God allow us as a race to go in slavery? Do you know why? Okay, now. So what I'm going to do, unlike Christianity, is we're going to build and answer that question together. You with me? You with me? Start with Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the writings of Moses. Moses was darker than you. Moses was an Israelite from the tribe of Levi. He was a black man who's described in Exodus 2 and Exodus 4. You understand that? Jesus Christ, who is the centerpiece of the Bible, was a dark black man, which is backed up by archaeological facts, historical, and also real paintings. You understand? I'm, I'm going to get that in a minute. Give me the painting with 922 A.D. Where is it at? Here it is. In this image, this is the image of 922 A.D. It's called the Prima Donna. They got real artwork of the mother of Jesus in it and the son being black men and a black woman. Now, Deuteronomy 2015. Listen good. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. Now I want you to understand something. You have to refilter the way you think of the Bible. And I don't give a damn what nobody tell you. The Bible was a book, and I have to use the word black, just so you know I'm talking about you. Because you're not black. If you think about it really, really think about it, right? Who gave the term white people and black people? Why are Chinese not called yellow people on paper? Why are Arabs not called another hue of color? It it's only black and white because white represented pure and good and black was evil. That's what we learned in slavery through the white man. But when you really uncover the truth, Jesus was black, and I say black, I'm talking about y'all. Moses, all of them. And Moses warned us what would happen if we didn't do something. Now I'm going to show you why your great granddaddy had to be a slave. I'm going to show you why his daddy was a slave. I'm going to show you why my great-great-grandfathers and them were slaves. Because I'm going to prove it with the Bible. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. We're going to read it again.
one thing Christian pastors do is this. They read a scripture, they move on to the next one. I'm not going to do that. We're going to make sure you understand this. Read it again. But it shall come to pass. What does that mean? It shall come to pass. That's talking about there's going to be an event in the future that if you don't do, it's going to happen. You understand that? Watch this, Ray. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, it said if you don't listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. What is the voice of God? The Bible is going to explain it. What is the voice of God coming down and say, Hey brother, don't get hit by that car. God is talking to your ass. It's not talking. God sent prophets to write things to tell you. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Watch this. It's going to explain what the voice is in the next part. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments. What, what is the voice of God? Read it again. All his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. What is the voice of God? Read it again. All his commandments and his statutes. Read it from the top. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. You all know today, these Christ Christianity is an old man religion. It's an old time slave religion. And we're going to come out of that garbage. Read. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The voice of the Lord thy God. Let's let the prophet explain. Read. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. What is the voice of the God of the Lord God? When you observe to do all the commandments of the Lord. So when God talks to you and you keep the commandments, guess what you're doing, black? You listen it. Now, why do we go into slavery? And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Let me ask you a question. Can you name three curses for me in Chicago? If not, I'm going to do it for you. Can you name, first of all, a curse is what? What is a curse? A blessing is one thing. What is a curse? Uh, it's a damn bad thing. If you get blessed, are you going through bad stuff? A blessing is a good thing and a curse is a bad thing. You with me? Read it again. Pay attention, man. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. We know when you listen to God, you do the commandments. We just proved that out the Bible. Read. That all these curses. What? All these curses. Read it again. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what would happen if we didn't keep the commandments of God? What would happen to the 12 tribes of Israel? All these curses or bad things would come upon thee, right? Right. This is how we know that you are the biblical Jews. I'm going to prove it more. Verse 5, uh, give me that curse should I be uh, the seed of that body. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 18. Listen good, black man. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. What is that talking about? Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Does an orange grow from your damn elbow, brother man? Bring it it's talking about the fruit is called the seed. Bring what What is a seed that comes out of you? Your sperm. That's why they call you father or grandfather. Because your fruit is the sperm. What is it talking about? Read it again. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Curse shall be who? Let's, let's, let's put, if this is the fruit of thy body, what's the word that God wants us to use? The fruit of thy body is your what? Your children. Can I get, come on, read it again. You're not paying attention. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. What comes out of your body? A fruit grows and is spit out, right? An orange creates an orange and is spun out. What can come out of you that's the fruit that will grow out of your body? Sperm. Because you became a father to what? Children. This is talking about your children. I'm going to prove it more. Read. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Read. And the fruit of thy land. And uh, now that's talking literally about your crops, black man. Google black farmers' plight in America. 
your farmers in general are going through hell. But the black farmer, he catching more hell than anybody right here. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters. Stop. See, one thing about Christianity, they ain't going to do to me. I'm not going to rush through something. I'm going to go slow because I'm not here to, I don't want your tithe money, brother. I want you to learn what God wants you to do so you can fix your life. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now, hold up. What's the synonym for your sons and daughters? Hello? What's the synonym for your sons and daughters? We just went over it. No, what did God call it? The fruit of your body. Now we're showing you what would happen to the fruit of your body. Read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. The fruit of your body was given away. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What people were we given to, sir? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that we live in a society where we as black people are really worried about offending the very people that have uh, continued to press us. You ever been called a nigga by a white person before? Well, I have. I, well, I have. You been so it, that's worse than being called a nigga. Right. Why you? Why, what you do to deserve to be kicked? What year was this? Nineteen fifty eight. You went to a store and asked and a white man kicked you because you asked for something. Well that's worse than being called a nigger. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight and verse thirty two. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. I'm going to ask you again, black man. The Bible says that your sons and your daughters would be given to another people. My question, you just answered the question before. What people were our children given to? I'm going to say it. The white man. The white man. It's called slavery. Your great-grandfather was a slave, unless you're lying to me. Was that true? What you mean, well? Yes or no? I, I believe I made a mistake. My, my granddad was Okay, so that's even what your... Now your great... Your grandfather was a slave. My question is, who was he a slave to? Arabs? The white man. This is why, brother, our Christianity has your mind, all of our minds. Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. This is talking about that we are the Israelites. Your grandfather was given as a possession to a white slave plantation where he worked for free. Don't you think that's a bad thing? This is showing you that you are the Israelites. You are the people of the book, my brother. And I'm trying to teach you. I want God, God's trying to show you, Ray. Hold up. Go. The picture, you got a cell phone on you? I hope you take a picture. One of you young ones, come over here and help them take some pictures and stuff. We're going to help you to get some of this information. Take out his phone. He probably don't even know how to do YouTube. You know how to do YouTube, brother? You know how to watch a, a video? Come on. Well, I need you to learn, all right? Read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That's what black people in Chicago are going to learn. You got to learn that your history is literally connected to the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is the black man and woman's history. You must come back to that history. You Mexicanos and Aztecas, you are, you are our brothers, hermano. Read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fear with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. 
Let me ask the brother a question. Hey, my, what's what's your name, brother? What's your name? What's your name? Willie. Willie. Mr. Samuel. Mr. Samuel. Can I call you that? Mr. Samuel. How did your grandfather's people? Because he they had he had a family too. Your grandfather that was a slave, he had a family. He had people that cared about him, that loved him. So when he was stolen, how do you think that made them feel? Okay? My question to you is, how did Willie, Mr. Samuel, how did your grandfather and his people come to this country here? How did they get over here? You said what now? You would say on the boats. So you're, you're correct. Now I'm going to show you the boats and how Mr. Samuel, your grandfather who was a slave. And when I say slave, I mean I say that with pride. Because that's the thing that connects us to the Bible. Going through slavery is just a small step. We're promised a kingdom with slaves in it for us, Mr. Samuels. Read 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mr. Samuel, do you remember the movie The Ten Commandments? I know you remember that movie. The, the writer of that movie was a writer, a director named Cecil DeMille. And it came out in the state. They actually filmed that movie in Egypt. Do you remember, and he's from your generation, do you remember an actor that played Moses in Cecil DeMille's movie, The Ten Commandments? Do you remember that actor's name? Okay, well, I, I'm going to tell you. You ever heard of Charlton Heston? Oh, boy. You don't know who Charlton Heston is? He's the Brad Pitt of your age. Damn. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we were slaves in Egypt back thousands of years ago. Moses, remember he said, if you don't listen to the voice of God, which as we went over that, is when you apply the commandments. If you don't apply the commandments, all these bad things are going to happen to your people, Mr. Samuels. One of them is that you're the fruit of your body, meaning your great-grandfather had your grandfather, correct? What happened to his son? Your great-grandfather had your grandfather. What happened to your great-grandfather's son? He became a freaking slave, man. Stay with me. Are you with me? Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. You ever had a stroke, brother? You ever had a stroke before? Because I don't, I don't want, I, I'm going to slow it down because if I, I want you to, under, I'm not trying to talk down. I want you to understand what I'm saying. All right, well, well then stay with me. If I, I'm going to get a, I'm up, it's a bopping you in the head every time you're going to answer wrong, man. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We served in Egypt before. That's why I'm referencing the movie, The Ten Commandments. The Lord said we would go back into Egypt again. Read on. With ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. I'm going to show you something. I'm a, hey, my brother, how you doing this morning? Green shirt. Are you, are you, are you trying to sell, sell something to us? So hey, let me just say, if this was Sunday, I would consider it. But being that it's the Sabbath of the Lord, the 12 tribes of Israel were not supposed to buy on the Sabbath. But you, you were sent here to learn the word, but you're concerned with selling on the Sabbath. That's the curse right there in itself. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. I want you to make the connection. Pick it up. I want you to make a connection, Mr. Samuels. I want you to look, Mr. Samuels, read it again. And there they shall be sold unto your enemies. Come come closer. You you get the reader, come down here real quick. I want to show you something. Read it again. And there they shall be sold 
done to your enemies. When you look at this, this is this what we got to do. We got to open up our eyes and be honest about who we are. You see that right there? That's a black man. What is on his back? What? How did it get there? From the whip. From the whip. Who ordered that whipping? No, not I guess it was the white man. You ain't going to guess. You ain't going to make me second guess myself. Look at this black sister right here. Who is she carrying on her back? Looks like a white baby. Do you think she wanted to carry a white baby around on her back? Hell the hell no. Bring it out. Now, read it again. Start 68 from the beginning. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Hold that, get Exodus 20 and 2. So the first time that your forefathers, meaning your granddaddy was a slave, the first time that your forefathers, they started to break the commandments, God started to put bad things on them because they didn't keep the, the sayings of the Lord. They started to break all the commandments. This is how we became so low in Chicago. This is how we became low in New Orleans, in New York City, and Compton, in Nicaragua. All the places where you see black and brown people, God is explaining why we are like this. Great. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That's why I reference the movie The Ten Commandments. We were slaves, listen to me. We were slaves in Egypt to other brown people. He's not, you understand that? That's why you gotta understand the movie The Ten Commandments is wrong. Black people enslaved other black people, just to put it plain. Now go back to 28 verse 68. I need you to listen. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. We would go back into the house of bondage where we were slaves with what? With ships. Earlier you explained to me that your grandfather, your great grandfather, that you went back and said now was my granddad. You said he came over here on what? Yeah. Oh, you said boats, right? You said boats. Boat. So now, this is a prophecy that if we didn't keep the commandments, God, the God of this Bible, would do what? Put us back into slavery. Read it again from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, those ships are the same ships that we see here. And I'm proving a point. Now watch this. You might say, well, maybe they was having a good time on the ships. We go, oh, well, no. God is going to tell you what they was doing in them ships. Ray. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Because we actually came historically, historically, if you look here, we actually came from here. This is our homeland. And when Rome conquered our people, that this is called the Suez Canal, it's a man-made waterway. We used to be able to, Joseph and them walked into Egypt. This was all connected. So what we did when Rome came, we scattered ourselves throughout Africa. And then when we began to break his laws even more, God used the Arabs and the white men to gather us up and he shipped us to all the plantations where your grandfather served as a slave. You understand that? You are, the, you are the special one that God is trying to call home. Read it again. And thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. I'm going to see if you get this. Read it again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Who is driving the boats? Uh, the white guy. Well, how you know that? Because... I don't really know that. No, you damn sure know that. Because they're the ones who had was whipping your grandfather's back. They're the ones that gathered us. Bring it up. But, but God is telling you who they are. Read it again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Read it from the very top and 68 all the way down. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. What? into Egypt again. This ain't the first time
time that black people in America have been slaves. We were slaves in ancient Babylon, slaves in Assyria before that, slaves for the doggone Persians. We have served slavery after slavery. And we're back, and this is our last time. I'm, I'm telling you who you are, Ray. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, remember that he said, I'm going to bring you back into bondage with ships. Now watch this, Ray. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there! Stop! Because black people, ask the average black man in Chicago, where are you really from? After he get by his ignorance of saying Chicago, he gonna say somewhere in Africa. You ask him what part, he go, I don't know. Because actually, we are from a place called Israel. Right. Which is the very northern eastern part of Africa. That's right. It is. So we're telling you where you come from in northeastern Africa. And I'm going to show you and prove to you that it is not me making stuff up that the white man was driving the ships. I'm going to prove it to you, Ray. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there. Stop. There when the slave ships docked. And there. Remember you was on a ship, right? And there. Read it again. And there ye shall be sold. What? 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 And there ye shall be sold. For what? Unto your enemies. Wait a minute, brother. So, it's the King James, brother. It's the King James Bible. Yeah, well, I know the King that in Bible. Well, it's in every single Bible. Bring it out. And this is why we're showing you that the Lord is trying to deal with you, bro. Because white men, Christianity is a lie. They tell you that God loves everybody. Don't worry about slavery. To love your enemy? No. Do you know the white man's going into slavery for what he did to your people? I can prove that. That's not me making stupid statements. But we black men can't even accept that. They're so busy trying to please this guy. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. So who does got, it's a historical fact, your grandfather was a slave for white men, right? Is it, is it, am I making that up? Now watch this. I'm going to ask you a question. And I bet you, you're not even going to want to answer the question. And it's not your fault. It's a thousand, it's a 400 years of white man religion that is still in your mind. Read it again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. Read it again. For bond men and bond women. And there, read it from there. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Who's your enemies in this verse? It's the white man. Who's your enemies in this verse? The white man. Damn straight it is. Bring it That's what we're showing you. Why would we believe a religion that he gave to us when we couldn't read in slavery? You know it was a law that if we read anything, they would kill us in slavery. Did you know that? So now, I'm going to show you the scriptures that they don't want us to see. I'm going to prove it to you. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14 and verse 1. This is some of the scriptures they never wanted the slaves to learn. They didn't want us to get hope. They didn't want us to get inspired to overcome the oppressors. I'm going to show you that in these last days, the Lord is raising up the Israelites. We're going to keep, listen, we're going to go back to listening to the voice of God. We're going to do the, the commandments, and he's going to make our, our time easier here amongst the white man, our enemies. Read. Look at Chicago. Why is it that downtown you see Caucasians that are carefree, walk around, ain't got a care in the world? But you go to the west side, and you got to duck bullets? You don't think that's designed? You don't think that's a damn curse? Bring it out. I see, I ain't even from here. I start pick up on that quick. Read, come on. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. And, and that's who you are. Jacob was a, a patriarchal from your patriarchal line. He wrestled with an angel. His name became Israel. He had 12 uh, sons, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. We broke God's laws, we went into slavery. He's sending the prophets back to call you back to take your rightful place in the earth. That's right. Read. That's right. And we'll, and, and we'll yet choose Israel. Read from the top again. Isaiah 
chapter 14 and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. You see these black people here in Chicago driving around in these cars, acting like they're not listening to what's going on. You are the real Jews. You have never been black a day in your damn life, sister. You black people are the real Israelites. You must come back to the one true God. You must learn what to do. Read. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. That's who we are. We are the, we are the Jews. Read. And yet choose Israel. And he going to choose the 12 tribes of Israel. That's who you are part of. Read. And set them in their own land. You know, you know where you were not set when he scattered you in the transatlantic slave trade. We left our land and we have not been back since. So God's saying, when you come back, I'm going to put you back in your own land. We don't even know. That's how we know when Christ said, give me Matthew 15, 24, hold that. Who else in the world is more lost than blacks in America? Bring it out. We are the lost ones. And Christ, who look a lot like you, a lot like you. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Read. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who black people are today. You black men and black women, you are the lost sheep of the house of the nation of Israel. And Christ is coming back for you. And we're not sugarcoating no Christian doggone job crap. Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I see, we deliver the truth.